Hello Game Makers, this is Game Maker Rob and today's episode we are going to be doing a hero conga line uh, so you can make your heroes follow each other around the town. So let's get started. Okay, so before we begin, I'm just going to show you how I have things set up as usual. So I've got four heroes. Each hero has a different sprite for each direction he can move. And each sprite has three images. Uh, so they create an animation like this. If you can see, that's the animation. Um, so I'm just going to open the groups. The room itself, we have a room of a size 320 by 180. Viewports are enabled and visible. And the first viewport, uh, sorry, the first view camera has a width of 320 and a height of 180. So basically the, the uh, dimensions of the room itself. And just so we can see things better, uh, I've just increased the size of that by four for the port. Um, and that's pretty much it apart from adding uh, the player object into the room. So we have a player object and we have the follower objects. Uh, the player object has been assigned uh, the hero zero sprite. Um, I've done the same with the followers, but the followers are going to get their own sprites assigned based on an array, which we will get to next. Okay, so uh, OBJ player is where we're going to be doing most of the work. Um, in the create event, we have an enumerator uh, for up, down, left and right. Um, and then just so we can tell the follow objects and the hero objects, the, the main player object, uh, what sprite to use, we're just going to assign the proper sprite indexes here. So hero two, when he's moving down, we'll use this sprite, which is this sprite here. And then we have macro for grid size. Uh, this is going to save you some time because um, if you ever want to change the size of the grid, you only have to do it once. You don't have to keep changing the number because we use grid size quite a few times if you had a number rather than a variable name um, and you want to change the size of the grid you would need to change it many times not just once image speed uh, this is going to control how fast the animations play target x and target y that's going to be uh, the destination for where the player or the follower is going to head to um, grid x grid y are going to be like the cell coordinates so if you imagine the whole the whole screen is a grid um, and the top left is zero zero if you want to move one to the right that would be uh, one zero but they would have moved 18 pixels uh, a followers is going to be an array that holds the the IDs of all of the follow objects um, you don't have to have four heroes you can have two five, three, ten. Uh, the code should work just as well for all of them. Uh, the caveat being you'd need to update the grid, uh, sorry, the array, this global array accordingly. So this code is going to create the conga line uh, and I want to have three followers. That's why it's called total followers. And I'm going to use a while statement which uh, as long as the total number of follow objects is less than this, then this code is going to run. So it's going to run three times. So count is going to grab the number of follow objects, which starts off at zero. Uh, follower is going to store the ID of the newly created follower. And I'm going to be creating them on the same X and Y coordinates as the player and the same layer. Uh, we're going to set the sprite index for the current follower object based on count. So count's going to start off at zero and we don't want to use the first set of sprites. We want to use the second. So where the one is. So we're going to set this follower sprite index to count plus one. 
directions down. So the first follow object is going to get this one. And then count's going to be one. So it's going to get this one for the second follower and this one for the third follower. That's how the sprites are going to be assigned. Uh, and then we are also going to give uh, the follow object a variable called SBR index. This is just so it knows which entry, if it's 0, 1, 2, or 3, it's going to be. Uh, I don't think I mentioned it, but um, the player object, OBJ player, starts with a sprite index of 0. Uh, don't need this. That was just for debugging, testing. Uh, and then this here is where we store the ID of the follower in the A followers array. We're going to need that because we need to tell um, each follower in order where it's going to be moving to. Okay, so if we go into the step event of the player object, this is where most of the code is and where the conga line code happens. So at the very top, we're going to be doing this bit for now. If the player's X and Y equals the player's target X and Y, then either they finished moving or they weren't moving to begin with. And this code is going to run. We're going to check for pressing up, down, left or right on the, uh, the cursor keys. Um, hopefully this is pretty self-explanatory. If we press left or right, uh, we want to be setting target X to either x plus or minus grid size. If you press up or down, we want to set target y uh, to the current y plus or minus grid size. Uh, this you can see already we've used grid size four times. Um, we're going to use it a lot more. So now uh, this bit here, if a followers is not equal to minus one, so if we actually filled the array with some information that means there's going to be followers this is the conga line code but we're going to explain how does the conga line work to begin with so the follower objects so these guys they all want to move to the same xy that the hero in front of them is occupying so uh hero the first the player object is going to move and the guy behind them is going to want to move to the space that the hero has just moved from and the follower behind that guy is going to want to occupy occupy the space that the previous follower just left and so the do all, all 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 that's happening is they're moving into the previous space that the previous id occupied um, I think it sounds more complicated than it is. Uh, so here's a bit more information. Um, instance to follow this variable is going to store the ID of the instance that the next follower wants to follow. So it's going to start off with the OBJ player ID and then it's going to switch to the ID of the follower that we just did the code for. Uh, so um, apart from the very first follower, the other followers are going to, going to be reading IDs of OBJ follower rather than OBJ player. Um, if the follower is already standing in the same place as instance to follow, the follower will remain where they are. So um, at the very start, all the followers are going to be sharing the same space as the hero. If I just run the game, this will probably be a bit easier to visualize. So you can see at the start of the game, they're all sharing the same space. If I press right, only the hero, only the player object is gonna move. If I press down, then the very first follower is gonna move. If I press left again, then the second follower moves. And then finally, one more movement will allow the last follower to move, the ninja because he finally, he's not going to be sharing the same space as the guy in front of him. And that's how it works. If I move back onto the first guy, or if I try and share the same space, can I do that? <laughs> well, you can see basically that whenever um, a follower shares the same space as the guy in front of them, then they're not going to move. That's how you get this effect. 
So um, all of the target X and Ys are worked out for all the instances before any movement is done. So um, for every instance of OBJ follower and for OBJ player, uh, they know where their target is before any of them have moved. And it's just based on whether the guy in front of them um, is in the same space they were to begin with. So if pressing left, right, up or down, set OBJ player to instance to follow, get their ID. And this for loop is going to cycle through all the IDs of OBJ follower. Um, the first follower is going to be the ID stored in a follower zero. If their X and Y um, is not equal to, if either their, their X or their Y is not equal to instance to follows X or Y, then they're going to get a new target X or Y. Otherwise, they're not going to get a new target X or Y and they're not going to move. And once this is done, instance to follow is going to now have the same ID as follower and follower is going to have the next entry in A followers. Okie doke, uh, that was the hard stuff really. Uh, the rest is pretty straightforward. So I'm going to minimize this region now. If either X does not equal target X or Y does not equal target Y, then this is going to run. So we're going to set the facing based on whether uh, Y is less than or greater than target Y. We're going to set the sprite index as up or down. The same for whether X is less than or greater than target X. We're going to set this one. Um, we don't want to use the equal sign, otherwise, uh, going to always end up with this sprite being set and then we want to move the player if x does not equal to target x then x plus equals sign target x minus x so uh, target x minus x is either going to be a positive or a minus number uh, we only need to know whether it's one or minus one and that's what sign is going to give us. It's going to return minus one or one. Same for Y. That's how we get to move uh, one pixel every step. Uh, and then all we need to do is upgrade our update, our grid coordinates. So grid X equals floor of X divided by grid size and grid Y equals floor of Y divided by grid size. And in the follow objects, create event, we're just going to initialize target X and Y, grid X and Y, and set the image speed. And in the step event, uh, very similar code to the hero. Um, all we need to do is check to see whether X or Y does not equal to target X and Y. Set the facing, uh, move the follower, set their grid X and Y. And that is it. Uh, thank you for the suggestion. Um, hope you all had a great Christmas and New Year. And I will catch you next time. Bye for now.